Hey everybody, it's Brandon, The Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And this past week, I have been on Royal Caribbean's Vision of the Seas for a eight night cruise in the Western Mediterranean. Now, I wanted to talk to you about what the ports were like that I went to. And so I made, you know, a few videos before uh, where I dedicated a video to a port and that didn't go over too well with everybody. So I'm gonna try this quick hit approach to tell you about what my experience was in these ports, what I chose to do. Um, number one, so that I can document it for myself. So when I'm uh, a little bit more senior, I can go back and check out, hey, what I actually do here, uh, but hopefully provide some insight to all of you on what you need to be thinking of if you are going to these ports. Now, I'm gonna try my best to get the names of these places right, but as you can tell from the prior videos, I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna call them different things. I'm gonna try to get it right, but I probably will mess up some of these names. So let's go over the five different ports um, that I have not talked about so far and share with you my experience of those. So the first port is Ojekio, Corsica. Now you see why I pause there to get that name right, or at least try to. So this to me felt like a resort town. So I think everybody here was on their last summer vacation before fall came. Um, lots of tourists in this area. It was hustling and bustling. And so we decided to go to a beach and have a beach day. And so there are two different beaches here. Um, and so I'll let you choose which one's right for you because there's pros and cons to each of these. The closest beach um, that we chose not to go to was super small. It's not that far away from the port, about 10 minutes, but it was packed with people. It had people everywhere. So we decided to keep walking for probably about another 30 minutes to find the second beach, which had nobody on it whatsoever. It was very quiet. Um, there's even some kayakers that came in um, and were able to hang out on the beach, large beach, um, but nobody was really there. And I didn't really understand why nobody was at this beach. Um, so we got on there. The sand here is a little bit rocky. It's not the best in the world. Um, and then while I was standing in the water, playing on my phone, probably responding to YouTube comments, um, in ankle deep water, I got stung by a jellyfish. So come to find out, this was Jellyfish Central Beach and they were everywhere. So there was even a lady after me that got into the water. I heard her go, oh, there's no fish in here thinking that she had looked to make sure there was no jellyfish. And literally two minutes later, she was getting stung all around her chest um, by a jellyfish. Um, so not the best beach. Um, if you're looking for getting away from everybody, it's a good fit, but the other beach is gonna have much nicer sand. People were everywhere in the water. So I assume that they did not have the jellyfish and it's closer to the ship. I would say just get off early so you make sure you're getting a good spot. The other thing that I will say that you can do here is go to the cafe. So there are plenty of cafes along the water. You all know that that was my favorite pastime actually in the Western Caribbean, or excuse me, Western Mediterranean, wrong location, um, was to sit down at a cafe, enjoy an espresso, have maybe some food. I loved my French pastries um, and just enjoy the people watching while I was there. Now, the second port that we went to was Palma de Mallorca, Spain. And this was a, again, hustling and bustling time. Um, but the port, being an industrial port, you don't really get dropped off really close to anything. So you've got a few different options. Number one, you can take the shuttle bus directly from where the ship lets off down to the cathedral, which is the option we went through. Um, you did have to pay while you were there. I think it was $20 per person. Um, but it drops you off right where you want to be, which is probably a 45 minute walk if I had to guess. There's also um, taxis that you can do. There is a hop on hop off bus that operates right at the end of this terminal that you can do. I think that's probably a great option if you wanna to try to see a lot in one day. The buses did appear to be a little bit crowded though. So make sure that you are um, number one, getting a ticket that you can show them. I heard one person um, bought a ticket online but didn't have a way to show them or that he still had to go to the office to get a ticket it seemed. Um, so make sure that you're understanding the rules of getting on that. Or you, like I said, you could walk to the port, which is about 45 minutes away. Now, when we got to the cathedral, which is the biggest thing to do in Palma de Mallorca, was crowded. I think that they had had mass, so they had stopped everything, and the lines were through the building, or you know, around the corner and past the building. They also have a palace here where one of the old kings and queens used to sit, and that also had an extremely large line, and I personally refused to wait in these lines. They just seemed out of control, and I was like, you know what? Let's try to come back later on in the afternoon. Let's use some of our tourist savviness that we have, that we've picked up, and come back towards the end of the day and see how it's going. And that strategy worked out perfectly for us. We were able to go back to the cathedral and the palace, and there was nobody in line. It was super nice, 
and the pictures and video turn out much better when you don't have a thousand other tourists there observing the sites with you as well. This cathedral was absolutely beautiful. If you do get a chance, I recommend paying the money to go inside. Just make sure that you do dress appropriately. When we were there, I did have on shirts, a shorts and a tank top. So in some places they enforce rules more strictly, um, but in here, it was not an issue luckily getting in, even though it was against their official policies. The other big thing to do in Palma de Mallorca is to go shopping. So get lost in all of their old school streets. It is a beautiful town just to walk around and there's some really neat shops and some clothing you're not gonna find in the States that I liked. If you have seen the interview I did with Mercedes La Fuente, who is the cruise director, that blue shirt that I have came from Palma de Mallorca. I've not seen anything like that in the States and clearly you all know that I love wearing a lot of blue. Um, so I saw it, fell in love, had to have it, found out it was double the price that I thought it was, but I still bought it. So definitely check out the shopping in Palma de Mallorca. The next spot was Ibiza, Spain. So our third port, or the third port I'll talk about was Ibiza. And this place, the port was a crapshoot. We got off, we walked up into uh, where all the taxis, there's a shuttle bus, there's a water taxi, and there were just people everywhere. Nobody knew where to go, knew what to do. I um, mean, it was kind of the Hunger Games with everybody that there. You had a taxi line, you had a shuttle bus line, and you kind of had to figure out where the water taxi was. So we waited for the taxi for probably five or 10 minutes, and there was one that came in a line of about 50 people. Um, we inquired on the shuttle bus, but again, there were people hoarding to get onto the shuttle bus. You bought a ticket when you got there, so the process was just taking forever for them to board the shuttle buses. So we said, you know what, forget it. We're just gonna walk into town and, you know, kind of risk it, if you will. And so we started walking into town and about 10 minutes away, we found the water taxi. We chose not to get on this. That probably would have been a great idea. I heard from some others that they were able to take the water taxi quite easily into the downtown area and that's where they were able to get a taxi. Though we decided to keep on walking, but I will tell you that the taxis there are actually not allowed to pick you up. So if you are just trying to, you know, huh, hail a taxi, they are not gonna stop and get you. We tried with about five or six. One guy gave us the, hey, you got a call, and I think he said three, three or some number, um, but you need the app to be able to um, go, or to be able to call a cab. And so that's one thing we've learned in Europe is that they are different apps, and it depends on the region and the city that you are in on what app you need to be using to call them to come and pick you up. Luckily, we found one driver who was very kind to us. She did pick us up, and she took us to one of the many beaches in Ibiza. Definitely research the beaches. There's plenty of options, something for everybody, and their beaches are really, really pretty. The water was a great temperature, and it was crystal clear. Um, so we hung out at a beach resort for the day and, you know, just relaxed and enjoyed. The fourth port that I'll talk about was Cartagena, Spain. And this was actually a really neat one. And so we've been doing a lot of tours just on our own and walking around. But I said, you know what, I wanna change it up. I wanna see what Royal Caribbean has to offer for the shore excursions. And so we did a day trip over to Murcia, uh, Murcia, uh, Spain, which was probably about a 45 minute drive away. It is the 10th largest city in Spain. And it was a really, really cool time just to walk around to enjoy the cafe. This is where I got to see an actual bullfighting ring. I'd never seen one or stepped foot in one. This one was wide open and allowed us to simply walk into the middle of the bullfighting ring, which was quite the experience. Um, not condoning that practice whatsoever. This, I think this one's been open since like 1963. So apparently it's still a modern style practice in Spain or at least in this particular area. They also had probably my favorite church that we saw was in Murcia. It was a beautiful church with all the different shrines, um, great to walk through, um, and it was complimentary. It was free. Not all the churches you're going to find allow you just to simply walk in. So I, I do recommend going to Murcia if you have a chance. It's early enough that we came back. We had about two, two and a half hours on our own. We then came back to Cartagena and we were able to walk around and enjoy Cartagena. The big ticket item to do here, go to the Roman theater. So the entrance is a bit hidden, so make sure that you're looking at where the entrance is. It's all the way on the left side if you're walking out of the port in what looks like a house. So you're just gonna go in here, you're gonna purchase your ticket or you can buy them online. And this house is gonna connect you to the muse museum in addition to a direct access into the Roman theater to see how it used to look. And the acoustics actually are really good. There's a gentleman who started singing 
um, from the stage while I was at the very high section and you could hear everything. So this is definitely something you wanna do. This port was also really hot. I didn't feel a lot of wind here. Uh, so make sure that you're bringing hat and plenty of sunscreen. Outside of the Roman theater, we simply just walked around. They also have a ton of shopping and cafes here. Um, so in Cartagena, that is another great thing to do. Just get, to get immersed in the city and enjoy yourself. And the fifth port I'll talk about, and this may be a little anticlimactic for everybody, is Valencia, Spain. So in Valencia, I chose not to get off the ship. I cried uncle and said, I need a port day um, or a sea day. So we had been going for, I think this was our seventh day in a seventh port and I was just exhausted. I needed to not leave the ship. I needed to hang out, relax, take some Brandon time, some me time, which is important. I'm all about balance in my life. And so I chose not to get off in Valencia. You know, this resulted in me being able to, you know, shoot a room tour, do um, the Vision of the Seas uh, overall tour as well, or Common Space tour. So I really had fun staying on the ship when everybody was gone. Um, but there were other people that also stayed on the ship and that were also tired just like I was. But I did hear from people that got off on the ship that Valencia was their favorite port. Um, it, it didn't really bother me that much because I knew that I needed a personal health day or a sea day. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to get off in Valencia, get off in Valencia. From what I heard, it is absolutely gorgeous. The buildings are the best to walk around. The architecture is fantastic. Um, it is very easy to get to from the port. They do have shuttle buses that you can also take that's gonna take, cut out about 30 or 45 minutes worth of walking. But if you wanna just walk out of the port, you can do that as well. So I hope this is a helpful video just to get you thinking about what you need to be doing if you are looking at going to some of these ports. They are a great time, but I think you probably needed to do a little bit more planning than what I did in these ports, or at least know what to expect when you get there. All right, everyone, this is Brandon the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.